how many of you have a team that's not super motivated? Anyone ever else feel like, like, <laughs> where are the people that are like me that actually have ambition? They're coachable. They got a good attitude. They're consistent. How many of us can also imagine that maybe some of those people are in your team right now, but you could do a better job of motivating them. You could do a better job of communicating with these people. So today we're going to talk about that very thing, how to create more duplication, how to create more independence, how to identify amazing people. In the beginning, everybody's dependent, right? They're dependent on their mentor. They're dependent on their upline. But eventually, if you want true freedom, you want to build yourself a legacy business, you need to create that independence. So you need to get better at the motivation piece. You need to get better at mentoring others, right? Sometimes we got to just mentor ourselves, but then eventually you want to build teams of duplication where you have a lot of people that are working their business with or without your involvement. So we're going to talk about that very thing today. But yeah, could you start off, Andrea, share a little bit about your story, your background, because I think it's so important for people to know like where you came from, that relatability piece, and then we'll get into the goods. Yeah, well, uh, I've been full time in this industry. I'll just start there for the last. This is my eleventh year full time. Wow, congrats! Um, but my background's education. I was a teacher turned principal. My big, big goal in life was to be the secretary of education for the United States. Did you even know that, John? Like, I did that's not. what I wanted to do with my life. Like. That's where I wanted to to go and and create like real big change and impact. And then, you know, like real life happens. Like you're in, you have five degrees, you're in the career of like your dreams, you're raising your family, you're in massive student loan debt, the credit cards are piling up because, you know, you've capped out on your income, but life just progressively becomes a little bit more expensive. And I was kind of in that position of, I love what I do, but I'm not making enough money. I got to make more money because... The kids are just getting older. And um, I kind of found myself in a position of what what can I do and what's out there. And what's really funny is uh, I didn't want to teach college classes. I didn't want to pick up, you know, uh, extra school obligations, but I wanted to make more money. It's funny how we find ourselves in those situations. And I was like, you know, my mom sold Avon growing up to like have extra money so that we could do little things here and there. What's out there? I failed my way through two opportunities. What I mean by that is I knew there was something in the network marketing space. I think sometimes you just have to find what really resonates with you, what really works for you, with you. And the first the first thing that I came across sounded really great, um, but I learned a lot about not becoming a part of something that's been around for 100 years mm. um, with a product or a compensation plan that didn't fit like your audience. And I yeah. learned that very, very quickly. So I was like super uncoachable, thought I could go my own way, didn't jump on calls, didn't go to trainings and just relied on my own abilities and had no success. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> Shocker. And uh, I walked away from that. And then I stumbled into a company that I know you were a part of for a really long time. That's kind of how, how we met. And, um, you know, I, I was like, okay, go to all the trainings, attend all the things. I learned a lot, but that, that model wasn't really built for like normal everyday average people to be successful. And you, yeah. you and I both know all the reasons why. Yeah. <laughs> and after two years of making no money, I decided I was just going to continue on in education. Like silly rabbit. Why'd you go look at something else? Like, this is where, this is where your calling is. This is what you're supposed to do. Kind of stay in that lane. And a handful of months later, I came across a, a business opportunity and a product that I got really excited about because it was in my in my lane of, of health and wellness and it was in my lane of opportunity and needing being in that place really to to make to make more money. And it's so funny because, you know, initially two years prior, I was like, yeah, I want to make more money. But two years later, I came to a point where I had to make more money. My mm -hmm. student loan payments were like a third of my monthly income. I found my place myself in this position of it's no longer a want to, it's a have to. Uh, I got started and I promised myself this time I was going to be coachable. This time I was going to be plugged in. And this time I was going to do whatever it takes. Like I always talk about, oh yeah, I have that whatever it takes mentality. Mm. But I wasn't following through on the action end of it. You know, working that business part-time while being a full-time principal of a, of a school with three kids under the age of five. I hit the top of that company in four months, went on to, you know, earn enough income that first year to pay off all my student loan debt in a fell swoop of a phone call, which was really cool, by the way, to building, you know, leaving my career in education and uh, making this my full time pursuit of, you know, impact. What are some of the things that you see in this day and age that create the duplication or maybe the motivation for people to take action? Because I know that is such a challenging topic of conversation. You know, it's not exciting to recruit 10 people and they all do nothing. 
Would we all agree with that? So yeah. what are some of those things that you do to really lock in with people and help them succeed and grow a business on a part-time basis? When you get started, there's always something that happens that like makes you want to seek change, makes you want to make extra income, makes you want to chase something else, you know? It, and it's that that is that catalyst of change that has it has to be there. You know, mm -hmm. for me, it was, you know, tired of telling parents every night to read to their kids so their kids would be more successful in school to only come home and not have the energy to read to my kids. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> you know, wanting to be a part of things and not having the time to be a part of things. Like, I love what you said about, you know, the money is great. But for me, I work for the flexibility. So when I think about staying motivated myself, I have to reconnect with that. For me, it's the flexibility so I can be present with my family, the time aspect. You know, when you're working with other people, it's asking them that same thing. And, and you know, we, we classify it on a very surface level of like, you know, what is your why? And that's all really great, but it's also the floofy stuff. Now I'm talking about like reconnecting with what matters the most to you. And I always think about things like this and people think I'm crazy and weird and morbid. But when I think back on my time as a mom, what is what is the one thing that I want my kids to be able to say about their mother long after I'm gone? Mm. And it's that she was present, she was engaged, and she was there for us. Nothing else came first. Yeah. And I want that. So I show up every day to offer that. And I fight for what we do every day. I show up what we do every day. So it's having that catalytic, catalytic moment for yourself and recognition and understanding of what it is that you want to have in your life and then making sure that you get after that. So if you're motivating other people, you have to help them figure that out for themselves. You've got to find that one thing for yourself that's going to hold your feet to the fire, even when things aren't going like you want them to go, because there's always, it's, it's, it's never going to go as we want. Yeah. <laughs> it's never going to go according to plan. So we have to find that, that string that keeps us connected no matter what. Right. The true test of a leader is when things do taper off or, you know, slow down or go backwards or decline or you have someone quit or you have someone troll on one of your posts. Right. It's like keep going because every one of those negative experiences, all that adversity, it's it's why you see people crying on stage when they get promoted. Like that's why people get so emotional because that's how you create a testimonial, baby. You're tested. You know, I've been doing this over 20 years and I can't even tell you the amount of people that I've worked with that had immense potential. Like they were some of my favorite people. They became like family to us. They're no longer in our business today, but I didn't let that stop me because they decided to quit. They weren't paying my bills anyway. It's easier to give life than it is to revive the dead. We've all heard this saying, and it's so true in network marketing. And this is why for me, I'm always launching new teams. I'm always ATMing, I'm leading by example. If I'm gonna tell my team to do something, then I should be doing that something. And, and look, there are times where I don't recruit as many people. There are times where I'm not working my face off or I'm not building my business like I did in those early days. That is kind of the beautiful thing about this is that eventually you can chill and still make a boatload of money because of all the impact, because of the foundation, because of the people you helped and the people you served and the people you supported. And it is easier to motivate your team when they see you out there showing up. Like if I'm telling my people, y'all gotta do videos and I never do videos. Y'all gotta create some curiosity, never creating curiosity. Y'all gotta do group chats, but I'm never doing group chats, right? It's so much easier to say, this isn't what I'm telling you to do. This is literally what I'm doing. You have to be a leader worth following. And that should drive kind of like the decisions you make and the way that you show up and the things that you're doing, because that's gonna speak volumes, which is why, I mean, I have this post-it that's on my computer. It's been there since I was a teacher. It is so faded. It's ridiculous. Like you can barely <laughs> read the ink, but it says, never teach what you don't do first. If I'm telling you, hey, this is what we're doing, it's because I know it's gonna work because I already did it. That's what leadership is. That's leading by example. And oftentimes when people come to me and they're like, my team's not motivated, I was like, yeah, because neither are you. My team's not inspired. Yeah, because neither are you. My team's not working. Yeah, because neither are you. Your team is often a reflection of what you have or haven't done or what you are or are not doing. And sometimes I even hate saying that out loud because sometimes it feels like the harshest pill to swallow, but there's truth in it. There's always going to be truth in it. There is nothing more impactful, in my opinion, if you want to motivate someone, and motivation is kind of a fake thing too, because motivation doesn't last. It's right. like bathing. We recommend it daily, right? If you don't want to stink, you probably need to do the personal development daily. Take action daily, right? I think it's so important to get people to events. I haven't seen anything that gets people 
more committed, to take massive action, to become more disciplined, to create better habits. Because remember I said in the beginning, sometimes people are in the business, but the business isn't in them. So if I were you, I would have this mindset, build my business from event to event, event to okay. event, event to event. Now, virtual events are cool, but if you were sitting down with us at a team retreat, at a mastermind, at a leadership session, at a court, and we were having this on stage and you were in the room, it would be so much more impactful. There's just something about that in-person experience. So if you're watching this right now and you're like, I don't even know when my next in-person event is, that's already a red flag. That's a problem. You should know. Then the question is, how many people are you bringing with you? And then the next question is, you ready for this one? How many teams are you going to have represented? How many separate lines of business? This is why I said, go launch some new teams, right? Let's say you go enroll five new people between now and your next event. Get those five people to also attend that event. Because I'd rather take five people coming out of an event than 50 people that didn't go to the event. Yep. What do you think about that, Andrea? Uh, I love it. So I have like an analogy for this and it's great. First of all, I think events are essential, right? Because you're either going to learn something about what you're doing or to learn something about who you are. <laughs> and both of those things are going to serve you immensely. I love attending any and all kinds of events. I, I haven't missed an event in over 11 years. I, I never will because they're just, they're everything. But think about it this way. I remember, I remember going to one of my first events by myself. I, was, I would drive like four hours every Saturday and go attend things by myself. And then, um, you know, I got to a place where I was like, okay, it's me and five people. And it was like me and I just wanted a whole row. And then it was me and I wanted a whole <laughs> And then it was me and I wanted a whole like, I wanted one whole third of that entire convention center to be our team. And then it was like, I got a point to my career, like walked in and 80% of the room was my organization. And in that moment, it wasn't about like, ooh, look what I did. It was more about like, ooh, look at what opportunity is being provided here. What level of impact they are all going to glean? They're all going to get something. They're all going to be better because of this. And like, it just felt like on a heart level, like so incredible. So I'll say this. When you try to build your business without events, it is like taking something that has a power cord that you need to plug in and you're plugging it into a single outlet. Sometimes mm -hmm. the outlet works. Sometimes the outlet doesn't. Sometimes you guys ever been to a place where you go to plug something in an outlet and for whatever reason, the outlet's loose. Don't ask me why outlets get loose, but they get loose and your cord doesn't stay in there and everything keeps falling out. Ladies with curling irons, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Happens in like, mm -hmm. sort of hotel rooms and it sucks, right? But when you go to an event and you take your team, it's putting them into a power strip. And when you have that power strip, you have... Like more things can be powered up. You can put eight appliances into that. Oh, and it's a surge protector. And events are surge protectors in the mind of like the things that go on that can cause power outages. It's going to protect it, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to prevent that like thing from popping, whatever it's called, a breaker or whatever. It's going to prevent, you know, <laughs> those things from taking place. You can power up more people, provide more power that's going out, but also protect by way of that, that's how I always think of events. Like, who's your power? And I and I say this often: is like, who who are your power? Who's your power strip for this event mm. that you're bringing in? That you're plugging in as many people as you can is to, into this, so that they can come come out of it better for it, stronger for it, more. And, and would you and would you agree also? Like, when you have that mentality, you have that commitment. Like you said, you have missed an event in eleven years, and I'm pretty sure that's the same amount of time that you've been full time. That goes hand in hand. So if you're like like one of those people where you're like, I don't know if I can go to the next event. Oof, that's already showing me, and it's actually showing you that you're not committed. So yeah. if if you really understand the power of commitment, and by the way, the power of proximity, right? You're like in the room with all the other leaders. Like leaders don't miss events. And it's not because we need it, although we still do, by the way, I still, when I go to an event, I'm like, oh, it's like taking a warm bath in 3% land. Like it's just something about it, man. It's just amazing. <laughs> but, but the bigger thing is your people, not just, not just your team, but like the, like the leaders, like coming out of that event, like everybody's running together, right? Yeah. That collaboration, that, that power, that energy, like you said, coming out of it, everyone's charged up to get, not just you, like all the people coming out of the event together are on fire. And I just think the sooner you make the commitment that I'm not going to miss events, like that's just a non-negotiable. Like there's only a few big events a year and I'm not, I might miss some of the smaller team events or some of like certain events I might not be able to attend, but like, let's say your company does three big events a year, two big events a year. And you go, I'm going no matter what, you know, you're going, you're gonna be like, all right, I guess since I know I'm going and I'm going to spend the yeah. money and spend the time and I'm going to have to take off work or whatever that looks like, take time away from the kids. You might as well figure out 
every single time, who are you bringing with you? There is something about the power of commitment that is just so important. And I think for those of you that see that correlation that Andrea just yeah. coincidentally decided, I'm not gonna miss events the last 11 years. And she also has been full time in this industry for 11 years, it goes hand in hand. A hundred percent. And the thing is, is there's two things that people really need to stop doing if they want to be successful long term. It's one, we have to stop putting an expiration date on our potential. Mm. Meaning like no long, you should get rid of that idea. Well, if in a year I haven't, or if by this time, this should happen, this should happen, this should happen. Stop putting a, like an expiration date on your potential. Trust that your journey is your journey and you're, you're, you are predestined to go through the successes and the failures, every speed bump, every hurdle, every tall, muddy brick wall that you've got to climb over. All of it is there because you, you're going to have to endure those things to get to where you're supposed to go and to be able to take people along with you. The other thing is we have to stop being conditional, conditional with our dreams, conditional with our success, conditional with our commitment. Like that, that is probably why I would probably say it's, it's majority of the reason why most people are wantapreneurs, as you call them, or most people struggle to have success is because they're conditional. I'm not successful until this is happening. And they put like these conditions on things. Or right. if people on my team quit, I'm going to quit. They put conditions like, and I don't, you know, I believe in unconditional love. I believe in unconditional relationships. There should never be conditions on things that really matter to us. Mm. Because then you're short, you know, you're shortchanging yourself and you're creating opportunities. You're creating, you're creating your own pits, if you will, that you're just going to fall right into. There shouldn't be conditions on it. Like, why would you do that to yourself? When, when are you going to become unconditional in your pursuit of your goals, of your dreams, of your success? So-and-so can quit. So-and-so can leave. So this can happen. This can happen. I'm here. Why? Because I know what I have is great. I know what I'm pursuing and I know the impact is the forefront of everything that I do. So as long as I'm still chasing that every single day, leading by that example, then what I'm doing, the work I'm doing is good.